Hey guys, YouTube World Hunter here. Okay, and now as promised, now in this video, I'm going to talk about like my thoughts on the uh, Super Showdown event this past Friday. So, yeah, I'll just say right now, like, um, this really isn't going to be like a full in-depth video on my thoughts of the show because I really didn't see, like, I didn't watch the entire show, but... Yeah, I was just, like, watched, like, the stuff that I was, like, kind of curious. See, basically the stuff that I really did, like, go in depth, like, talked about, I thought about the matches taking place. The ones I really, like, did mainly talk about in that video is really what I saw from the, um, from the show this past Friday. So, yeah, really, like, those are the main matches that I'm really going to be, uh, talking about in this video. We're not really going, like, in depth of the entire show. So, I didn't really, so like I said, I didn't, like, watch the entire show, but yeah, I've, like, looked up some, um, reviews from this, uh, show from people on YouTube, and, yeah, the reviews for this, uh, show, they range from kind of, like, average to, um, really bad, so, yeah, I don't really think any, I haven't seen anybody that actually has called this a good show, so, yeah, it seems like this, uh, show did, like, didn't turn out so well, yeah, I mean, yeah, the WWE is, like, having some trouble with these events in Saudi Arabia, because they're not really turning out very good, like, the Greatest Royal Rumble last year, that really just, like, turned out being kind of a mediocre show, I mean, there was some good on it, but, yeah, not enough to really, like, I think, say it was, like, an actual good show, the Crown Jewel event this past, uh, was it, like, October or November or something, yeah, that one, oh, man, there are a lot of people that are really, like, regarding that show as, like, the worst pay-per-view in WWE history. So, yeah, that turned out, like, being a very, really, really bad show. And then, yeah, then, now they then just had this one this past Friday, which, yeah, people aren't really thinking too fond of. So, yeah. So, yeah, it just seems that the WWE is really not doing so well with these Saudi Arabia shows. I'm not really sure, like, um, what the issue is with it or... It, and so, yeah, I'm not sure, like, how much longer WWE has this, uh, deal with Saudi Arabia and what other, how many times they're really going to be going to Saudi Arabia for these events, but, yeah, they really, like, got to up their game because, yeah, these uh, events really are not turning out that well. So, yeah, so, like I said, I really just only watch, like, the, um, matches that I really, like, was actually, like, real, I guess I should just say, like, the big matches of the show or really, like, what I did actually watch from the, um, event this past Friday, so, yeah, so, now, like I said, it's not gonna be, like, fully in-depth in this, uh, video about my thoughts for the show, it's just gonna be, like, kind of like a, um, yeah, just kind of the, um, a partial thoughts of the, uh, show, so, well, from just what I did see of it, so, yeah, so, I really did so I didn't really watch any of the undercard. Like I didn't watch um the Intercontinental title match. I didn't really see too much of Shane McMahon versus Roman Reigns. I didn't see like the handicap match. I didn't watch uh Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. Didn't really see um Kofi Kingston versus uh, Dolph Ziggler. So yeah, I really just yeah, my main focus on this show were really just like the matches with them. Um, Seth Rollins and Baron Corbin, and, um, Triple H and Randy Orton, the, um, 50-man Battle Royal, and The Undertaker versus Goldberg, so, yeah, this is really just, I'm really just gonna talk about those matches a little bit, yeah. So, yeah, starting off with, uh, Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin, this was actually the first, uh, match of the event, so, yeah, that was kind of strange seeing, like, the Universal title match open up the event, but then again, it did open up WrestleMania, so, I guess, it's fitting. And so, yeah, so, yeah, Seth Rollins, like, ended up, uh, winning this match, like, uh, yeah, Seth Rollins ended up winning against Baron Corbin, went after, like, a Baron Corbin was arguing with the referee, like, it, like, ended up, like, kept taking, um, Baron Corbin off guard, and so then Seth Rollins, like, like, took advantage of the situation and was able to, um, 
yeah, he was able to actually uh, roll up Baron Corbin to get the win. So, yeah, Seth Rollins ended up uh, winning the match and retaining the Universal title. Yeah, but then afterwards, uh, Seth, uh, Baron Corbin ended up attacking Seth Rollins, and then uh, Brock Lesnar, like, came down. Like, he was, like, planning to cash in his uh, money in the bank, but as Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman... Like, we're getting into the ring. Uh, Paul Heyman ended up tripping, and that, like, uh, caught a Brock Lesnar, like, a little bit off guard. And then Seth Rollins then ended up attacking Brock Lesnar, pretty much doing the same thing that he did to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Just, like, cheap-shotting him with a low blow and really just, yeah, pretty much doing what he did at WrestleMania. Giving him, like, the curb stomps and all that stuff. And so... Oh, yeah, so Brock Lesnar, like, did not cash in the Money in the Bank in last Friday. So, yeah, Brock Lesnar still got the Universal, uh, the uh, Money in the Bank contract. So, yeah, I'm not really too sure, like, how much longer this is going to uh, last with Brock Lesnar with the Money in the Bank contract. And then, um, you know, we'll, so, yeah, I'm not really sure, like, how long this is really going to last with... Brock Lesnar, like, having the money in the bank contract and how the attempts that he will have to cash in or the false attempts, like, last week on Raw, where he was saying he was going to cash in the money in the bank, but he didn't. Yeah, and he was mean to cash it in just at this event this past Friday, but then, yeah, Seth Rollins attacked him, so it stopped him from doing it. So, I'm not really too sure how long this is going to last with Brock Lesnar, like, chasing after Seth Rollins and attacking him and just pretty much just toying with him waiting to cash in that Money in the Bank contract, and how much longer the stuff between Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins is going to last. I mean, is Brock Lesnar actually going to win the title again? Is uh, he just going to fail his attempt to cash it in and to win the title? So I'm not really too sure how much longer this is going to last, but now, like, uh, in a couple of weeks at the um, next event, and a stomping grounds, there's a rematch between uh, Seth Rollins and Baron Corbin, and for the Universal title, and there is going to be a special referee for the match. It's not said who it will be yet, but, yeah, who knows, like, if, like, maybe Brock Lesnar may actually be the referee, or could it be Paul Heyman? And, yeah, I mean, yeah, the referee is going to be, like, at, a of Baron Corbin's choosing who will be the referee. So who knows, will Baron Corbin actually like get Brock Lesnar to referee or will it be Paul Heyman? And then, yeah, will then uh, Brock Lesnar take advantage of it and then attack the thrones and cash in money in the bank? I mean, yeah, who knows? We're just going to have to wait and see you know, on the 23rd what will happen. But yeah, I'm not really too sure how much longer this is going to last. So, yeah, only time will really tell with this uh Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins rivalry, and with Brock Lesnar with the money in the bank contract. So, yeah. And then, yeah, like I said, after this, then was a uh, Sami Zayn versus, or not Sami Zayn, sorry, Finn Balor versus uh, Andrade for the uh, Intercontinental title. I didn't see this match, so I really can't talk about this. But Finn Balor won and retained the title. So yeah. And Shane versus Roman Reigns. Um, I did like watch some of this match. I didn't really, like, see all of it. I really, like, wasn't, like, this really was not one of the matches I was really interested in, but I did, like, watch some of it. Yeah, you had, like, Drew McIntyre out at, um, ringside with Shane. Shane, and yeah, um, yeah, Drew McIntyre was, like, getting involved in this match occasionally, and then, and, um, after, uh, like, uh, uh, Roman Reigns ended up, like, uh, punching Shane. Like, Shane accidentally, like, hit the referee, and as the referee was down, then Drew McIntyre ended up attacking Roman Reigns with the Claymore, and then that allowed Shane to take advantage of it and, again, pin Seth, uh, Roman Reigns to get the win. So, yeah, so Shane got another win here. Oh, uh, gosh, uh, I'm not really too sure how, what this means and what this is going to go, where this is going to lead to. I mean... And, uh, yeah, at, at um, Stomping Grounds, there's now a match between Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, so, yeah, it looks, so I don't know, like, this is really just gonna, um, go towards, like, uh, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre feud with Shane just involved in it, I really don't know what it's gonna do, but, yeah, I guess, like, with Shane now, as a he, 
been a heel for the last few months. And so maybe we could get some stuff new with Shane, and it'll actually, like, put some more interest in it. Since, like, ever since, like, he returned in 2016 as a face, it just really has, like, did go, like, kind of stale for him. So, and now that he's a heel, it should, like, it, like, is now, like, it's allowing some more stuff to happen with him and to make people really more interested in him and really make him his character better. So, yeah, I guess that's a good thing. But, yeah, we'll just see what this leads to. Then, um, yeah, then it was, like, Lars Sullivan versus the Lucha House Party in a three-on-one handicap match. Yeah, Lars Sullivan ended up getting the win. Yeah, this was basically just, like, a squash match with the Lucha House Party, just the three small guys against Lars Sullivan, a big guy. So, yeah, basically it was just, yeah, the squash match, basically, like, the matches Ryback had when he came to the company. Well, when he was around in 2012, you remember what he was doing? He just, like, had those... Two on one handicap matches against two jobbers and just crushed them. So, yeah, this was what it was. And then Triple H versus Randy Orton was next. So, like I told you guys before, I really was not really looking forward to this match just because, yeah, Triple H and Randy Orton really have don't. Yeah, they haven't had a good rivalry. I mean, their rivalry just is, like, one of the most disappointing rivalries ever. I mean, yeah, historically, these guys just really haven't had good chemistry with each other. And they have had, like, a lot of um, disappointing matches. I mean, yeah, you go, like, of course, there was WrestleMania 25. I've got that match between them, one of the biggest disappointments ever. And, of course, like, even going back to, like, 2004 and 2005 and... Yeah, even like like back during that time, like the mid to late two thousands, they really didn't have good many good matches with each other. I mean, of course, Triple H buried Randy Orton and just like crushed him in the main event spot after he and just won the title from Randy Orton at Unforgiven two thousand four. So that pretty much just ruined Randy Orton altogether. The as a main event tour. So yeah, and yes, just like historically, they really have had some pretty disappointing matches, and just, yeah, the rivalry really isn't good. But, so, yeah, but, yeah, this match was interesting. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, I thought it was, like, interesting. I gotta talk about this one part where, um, Dribble H was, like, uh, slamming Randy Horton on the announce table. It was, like, four or five different times, well, four or five times straight that, um, Dribble H threw Randy Orton on the announce table, and it didn't break. Like, how durable are the announce tables? <laughs> I mean, Triple H throwing Randy Orton on the table several times, and it didn't break. Like, what are these tables made of now? I mean, remember back in the day, they would break so freaking easily? And what are they made of now? Now, to be so durable that they just pretty much stand for... still remain assembled no matter what. So, yeah, that's just kind of strange to me. Yeah, but yeah, there were like some finishers, a lot of finishers used in this match that, that both guys survived. Like Randy Orton survived a pedigree. He and Triple H actually did survive the RKO and then, and yeah, Triple H also like got a cross face on Randy Orton. Yeah, and then... Yeah, and it actually seemed that Triple H was actually going to get the win, but then at the end, like, Randy Orton just hit an RK on Triple H out of nowhere and got the pin. So, yeah, Randy Orton won the match. So, yeah, I guess I am actually glad that Randy Orton has won because he's never really had a real actual decisive win over Triple H. And, of course, like, with, like I just said, all the times Triple H has <laughs> buried Randy Orton. And yeah, I think that this was actually a good move. So I guess I am glad Randy Orton won. I guess I was kind of like, initially, I was a little upset by it just because I was really expecting Triple H was going to win. But then over time, and like after it happened, I, I like felt, no, I'm actually kind of glad that this happened. And Randy Orton finally got a decisive win over Triple H. So yeah, I guess that was a good decision to have Randy Orton win the match. So yeah. Then next up was... Uh, uh, Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley didn't watch this match. Braun Strowman won, so really just... Uh, what are they going to do with Braun Strowman? Because there, there's there been the time for Braun Strowman. It looks like he's actually going to become the champion. And then WWE just like pushes him down, and he just is like back in the mid-card situation. Like, of course, like 
this past January at the Royal Rumble, Braun Strowman was supposed to face Brock Lesnar for the Universal title, but you now we had that situation where uh, he destroyed Vince's limo and he got pulled from the match. So yeah, it just seems that oh, every time Braun Strowman, it looks like Braun Strowman is actually going to get to the main event spot and become the champion. WWE just does something to just grade him down and just like put him back in the mid cards Nick Carter spot. So, yeah, I just really don't know, like, what they're going to do with him. Is Braun Strowman ever going to become the champion? It's just, like, they've been pushing him for, like, two or three years now, and they just, like, continue to just mess around with it, and just, when he gets to the main event spot, they just push him back down. So, I just really don't know, like, what they're going to do with Braun Strowman. So, yeah. Then... Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler for the um, WWE title. I didn't watch this, but yeah, Kofi Kingston did get the win. So yeah, Kofi Kingston retained. And then now at um, Stomping Grounds, there's going to be a rematch between them inside a steel cage for the title. So yeah, I guess I will talk a little bit about Kofi Kingston as the WWE champion because he did win the title at WrestleMania, and I really haven't said anything about it yet. So I guess I'll talk a little bit about Kofi Kingston as the WWE champion. Oh, gosh, um, this is probably going to sound like, well, this probably isn't the popular view of it, I guess I should say, but, oh, gosh, I am not really taking Kofi Kingston seriously as the WWE champion. I know that may sound like a, I may like get some backlash for that, but, yeah, I just really can't take Kofi Kingston seriously as a champion, because this isn't the... Like, the original Kofi Kingston that came to the WWE, like, with the SOS and all that, like, the single-star Kofi Kingston that was, like, actually, like, real cool, that was, like, a high flyer that people really did love. This is the goofy New Day Kofi Kingston that's the WWE champion. And I just really cannot take the New Day seriously. I mean, they're just so freaking goofy and silly, just... This really just does seem like Santino Morella type of of gimmick. gimmick. Like, they're just, like, being so freaking silly, and I just am really not seeing Kofi Kingston seriously as the WWE champion. I mean, if this was actually the original Kofi Kingston that came to WWE that became WWE champion, I would actually... I would actually probably be, like, a lot more invested into it, but just seeing the New Day Kofi Kingston as the WWE Champion, I just can't take him seriously. So, yeah, I'm sorry, but I just... Yeah, I don't... I really feel that Kofi Kingston should have actually gotten away from the New Day before he did become the WWE Champion. So, yeah, I mean, they did, like, build, have built up Kofi Kingston push. Like, they were building him up, like, leading up to WrestleMania to become the Champion. So, they did, like, give him, like, a big push, but I just... Because this is, like, New Day Kofi Kings, and I just can't take him seriously, so that's my take on it. Just, I'm not, I'm not taking New Day seriously, and I just can't take Kofi Kings in seriously as a WWE champion. I'm sorry, but I just, yeah, I don't take the New Day seriously, so, yeah, that's probably not really the popular view of it, but that's just how I see it, so, yeah. And then after this, then we had that, um, 50-man battle royal. I don't... Yeah, I don't even know who was all in it. It was just like I said in like the video where I was just talking about the card where just pretty much everyone came out all at once. It was just like a f couple of guys that were, uh, had their own individual interests. It was The Miz and Elias, so yeah. And I don't even like remember anything from this battle where like, it was just like so many guys in it, I couldn't keep track of it. Just All I'll say is like uh, Mansoor ended up winning, and yeah, Mansoor is actually from uh, Saudi Arabia, so yeah, I guess it was a good moment getting, like, the home guy the win in Saudi Arabia, so I guess that was a good moment, so yeah, it is what it is. Then, we had the main event with Goldberg versus The Undertaker. Uh, what can I really say about it? It was what it was. It was basically just like a finisher fest, really, where Goldberg hit two spears on Undertaker, then Undertaker sat up, Goldberg went for a third one, but, yeah, then Undertaker moved out of the way, and then, yeah, Goldberg actually did, like, get busted open pretty bad after he, like, hit his head on the ring post after attempting that third spear, and Goldberg survived a tombstone, then Goldberg hit another spear, and 
Like, Goldberg tried to go for the jackhammer, but he couldn't get, like, the full momentum of it. And then he, like, tried to go for his own tombstone on Undertaker, but they both fell. And then... And, yeah, of course, yeah, that was, like, one of the botches here. Like, there were, like, some several botches in the match. So, yeah, both of these guys just seemed, like, really out of it. Like, they just, like, were not in their, like, top conditions for this match. And then they just seemed, like, really, really rusty, considering, like, all the botches. Like, like I was just saying, Goldberg couldn't get, like, the full momentum with the jackhammer. And, like, well, Undertaker, I think, like, botched a choke slam. Yeah, there were just, like, several botches in here. And then... Yeah, then the match then just ended where uh, Undertaker finally hit a choke slam on Goldberg and got the win. So, yeah, Undertaker defeated Goldberg. So, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, I should be, well, I'm sure that there are some people that are probably disappointed with this, but what is there to really be disappointed about? I mean, what did you really expect? These guys are in their 50s now. I mean, they're not, like, in their prime. I mean, of course, this wasn't going to be, like, some really big, technical, violent match. I mean, these guys are kind of old for it, especially, like, seeing Goldberg. I mean, <laughs> like, what he, WWE did with him a couple years ago. I mean, to the match's credit, it was longer than the matches Goldberg did have when he returned a couple years ago, but still, the match was, like, really rusty and sloppy and botchy, so, yeah, probably some people are going to be disappointed with it, but I'm not, because, I mean, what is there to really be disappointed about? I mean, were you actually expecting to get, like, a physical whole, like, 20-minute match between these guys at their ages, so, yeah, it was what I was expecting, so, yeah, it is what it is, really, so I really can't really say that I'm disappointed with it, just because, you know, what, what was anyone really expecting to get from it, so, yeah, it is what it is, yeah, and then the pay-per-view then, well, the event then just ended after that, so, yeah, so, based on, like, what I've seen of it, it, and, like, the, I can kind of, like, see, like, why it is, like, getting the reviews that it is, so, yeah, I guess I probably really wouldn't recommend watching it, I mean, and I don't, from what I've seen of it, I really don't recommend it, but, yeah, if, like, you really do want to see, like, Goldberg vs. Undertaker, if that really is a true dream match of yours, I guess you can just kind of put this on, just don't be expecting, because of their age, don't be expecting, like, a true classic here, because, it is far from classic at all. So, yeah, but, yeah, so, I don't know. Maybe, like, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't seen all of it, so I don't really know, though, if there's anything to really recommend on it. So, yeah, just, yeah, I guess all I can say is, like, if you want to see it, watch it, and, yeah, maybe you can actually see for yourself whether it is a good enough show for you, so. But yeah, but from what I've seen of it, uh, it really isn't anything you really write home about. So, yeah, it is what it was. So, yeah, that's really, like, what I can really say about it. So, yeah. All right, so I guess that's all I really have to say about the Super Showdown event from this past Friday. All right. But before I actually close off this video, I do want to announce something for a minute because... Uh, yeah, there is, like, I wanted to announce, like, some plans that I've got for upcoming videos due to, like, something happening at the end of the week, alright? So, yeah, as I'm sure just about all you know, this coming Friday, we are getting a new Men in Black movie, Men in Black International, which is a spin-off movie of the original Men in Black trilogy. So, I figured, in honor of that, what I would do who for our upcoming videos, is I will be taking a look at the Men in Black trilogy. So, yeah, I'm going to be making reviews for all three films in the Men in Black trilogy coming up. Up, yeah. So, I will review all three films, and then when Men in Black International does come out this coming Friday, after I do go see it, which I am planning to take my dad to see for Father's Day, when I do see it, I will then make a video giving my thoughts on that film. So, now, so that's what I'm going to be doing next. So basically, like, throughout the rest of the week, I will be reviewing the Men in Black trilogy, and then I will make a video talking about the new Men in Black International movie when I go see it. All right, so stay tuned for those coming up. But So, yeah, but I hope you guys did enjoy what I had to say about the Super Showdown event. So, yeah, so, yeah, so stay tuned for my reviews for the Men in Black movies coming up next, all right? So, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.